right, let's get started. Uh, hello, good evening, everybody. Welcome again to our self-care Saturday. So we have been taking on topics uh, of uh, under the theme uh, to... How's everybody doing? Good, good, fine, thank you. Yeah, because under the theme, uh, metal to battle your challenges. So this is one of the ways that we actually have shown different ways of coping. So during uh, doing this self-care Saturday session of the month, uh, we actually want to work on reflection on how we can battle our challenges and increase our ability to cope well. So we have a journey uh, throughout our weeks uh, of a couple of topics uh, for uh, this month, right? And uh, it is actually under PRKPP and FIT unit to bring you uh, more uh, awareness or uh, put some light over mental health awareness and uh, also self-love. And uh, we have actually covered the topic. Uh, we started with the month with expect the unexpected. And uh, last week we covered on the topic of art of engagement. Okay, so now this week we are going to go in a little bit deeper as we go into our third week, which is character development. So we have Prof. Mohamed and uh, welcome to all our guests, uh, and everybody today. So welcome to you also on Facebook. Uh, please do help share. And uh, if you have any questions, you can leave in the comment box and we will discuss the session as um, Prof will uh, start his presentation soon. So right, uh, the floor is yours, Prof. Hey, thank you, thank you, Felicia. A very good evening to all my viewers, and my old friends, and my new friends. Hopefully, this session will be of benefit to all of us. Once again, uh, Saturday seems to be very fast coming. Uh, I thought I just had last Saturday, and now it is this coming Saturday. It's already night. Uh, as you know, uh, we choose topic uh, or we choose theme for the month. So this month theme, we were talking about how to be strong how to be courageous, how to be brave, how to be resilient in facing our own personal battle uh, due to the challenges that we had in our everyday life. Uh, so we started with actually uh, always be prepared, always be proactive, knowing what can happen, what will happen, will happen, what we don't expect to happen, sometimes also happen. So that's where the topic on expect the unexpected was all about. And then subsequently, we talk about, you know, we again, once we are ready for what is going on. All right. So we talk for the second topic. And now, once we are going into this third topic, third topic talk, but actually, it's no more a character development. Uh, what I'm going to address to you is basically, we have already our character. The thing is that, can we redefine our character? if any of this character is actually not really very good for us, which end up the way when we battle, we realize that uh, the battle we are is actually rather in a losing terms, and, you know, uh, losing condition. So that's why this topic comes about, all right, uh, after we have already developed uh, ourselves, knowing how we supposed to be, and now we look at who, what are we, who are we, are we how, are we ready about, uh, you know. Uh, so we are now looking into our current character, which is either it creates what we call a memorable characters that give a very positive outcome, or to quite a number of us possibly, also creating a memorable character which always end up with a maladaptive uh, situation in terms of our behavior, in terms of our emotion, in terms of our relation, and things like that. So if we were to look at this, that is where I said that the topic might not be actually a proper topic. But what I'm trying to say is that we already have a particular character. We already have a particular trait that is with us all this while which is already in our so-called personality. I will try to explain all this terminology so that we can understand. But 
look at this slide and I want you to appreciate what this slide is trying to tell us. Yeah, basically what we are doing today, tonight is to actually look at ourselves and try to redefine our character. Now look at, uh, see the problem is that when we see ourselves, we may see in a way of how we, uh, how we show ourselves, our appearance as man or woman, you know, we cannot judge them by how they look, by how they address themselves up, by what kind of a job they are doing, uh, what kind of a status they are having in the social situation, how they talk, how they laugh. But we are talking about basically the character that brings them out in the community, the character that define them in the community, the character that actually make them rather to be able to be in any situation. So this is where actually men and women we are looking for this character, the character of wisdom, knowing how to find solution to the problem. Any problem to this particular person, the character that they have, they will be always a good problem solver. A conflict, they know how to conflict resolution. If a problem, they know how to solve the problem. So they have the wisdom for looking for the solution. Then subsequently, they are very confident, glaringly, right? They show their confidence. They are optimists. So that, as you know, in a lot of situations, sometimes most of us thinking that we got no way out anymore. But this person with this character, man or woman, they show their confidence. They show their optimism. They have what we call a heart full of love, a heart full of compassion. So this is what we are looking for in a character. This is that's why if we don't have all these, we better try to now build this up, have this to the utmost potential that we can have. Because I believe our nature has all these elements. It is actually with us. We are born with all this good character. The only thing is that how much we are using it, how much we are applying it, and how much we develop them in ourselves. And the other thing we are talking about is this topic on metal to better your challenges. It is about the resilience, how the person, man or woman, prove to be able. And in this whole world, possibly the situation is not uh, is, is against them. The situation is not really for them. So, but they are still resilient enough to withstand the situation. So this is where we are talking now, because most of us without having this strong character, we may actually succumb to the problem of the challenges that we are facing. So tonight, let us look together what kind of a character that we can redefine ourselves. What are the things that we have, our character that we already been using that become shown in our so-called outwardly, our personality, then how we can improve them so that we become better, we become stronger, we become wiser, we become mature, we know how to handle situation that comes along towards us. So if we to look at this, these are the, the, the good and the bad character, that the traits that we can have. Example, somebody who has already been shown how courteous they can be. So the opposite of courteous is impolite. How determined they can be. The opposite of that is very unsure, not to not really, you know, uh, in the situation of really not sure what they can do, how they can do it. But those who are friendly, the opposite is that. Those who are hardworking, those who are humble, those who are generous, those who are punctual, those who are respectful, those who are brave. These are all the good characters that we need to be able to have with us. Because if we have more of the negative element of the traits, obviously the way we feel and the way we behave will be how it was as the negative element of it. So if you to look at all this picture, being brave, being loyal, being persevere, being considerate, being honest, being kind, being sin sincere, all these are, now if we were to do as a checklist, just tick, the, tick which one did you have, the good one and the bad one, which one that is prominent, which one is rather the one that you use it more rather than you use it uh, which good, the good one or the bad one that you use more. So this will give you an insight how and who you are. So as this uh, so-called slide has shown, these are the two opposite 
nature that we may have it. As I said, our our traits, there's always the two sides of the coin. If which one is up, then it is shown as the one that we possibly want to bring along all the time. If it is down, we're trying to actually suppress it so that no one see it. Even though we have that part, we did not make it prominent. We did not make it shown to others. Maybe it's a good one. Maybe it's a bad one. If it is a bad one, it is good for you to suppress it. If it's a good one, it is a waste if you did not bring it up, turn it up so that people can see it. So why did you use the negative one to show it up when actually you even also have the opposite of it, the good one that you need to put up and make it known to others. And this is where when we talk about character traits, when you have this strong character means that actually you have a very good core values. So again, as I said, you know, these are all the key character that all of us should have. And I believe all of us have those characters. The only problem is what push it down? What disturb it in such a way that they don't even believe themselves that they have this character? These are the issues. When you don't even trust yourself, you don't even believe yourself, when you don't even appreciate your worth, you don't even appreciate your self-esteem, you actually defeat yourself. When you have all these, in fact, you do have all these. The only thing is that how big it is, how strong is the magnitude, how powerful are all these that is within you. This is what we are trying to talk about today. Before we can move on to face our challenges, we need to develop this strong character. If we don't have it, if we have it, enhance it further because challenges are not as easy as we think it can be. Challenges can be in many ways. Challenges can be in many forms. Challenges can be from a mild to moderate to severe in nature that it becomes a big challenge for us even to sort it out. So I believe that most of us are very ambitious. Most of us have resilient. Most of us possibly are courageous, right? So look into that. Try to now please sit down. What are your good traits? And possibly, what are your bad traits that actually bring you and become make you more and more weak in the sense of facing the challenges? So again, here we talk about the good character. There are a lot of these so-called good characters that you are supposed to have, right? And so, if you can look at this list, right? As it is, you know, you know, when you are even funny, that is a very humorous character. It is a very good character that always can bring down the level of your stress, knowing how to take things and knowing how to look at things. You are a fun-loving person. You are an unselfish person. You are a selfless person. You are respectful to others. And you are also inventive in nature, creative in nature, and things like that. That is the important thing that you must look at, all this character. All right, and try to see how much you can build them up because I believe again and again, these are the ones that make a difference in terms of how you face the challenges that you are going to have. All right, so we talk about the difference, as I said, uh, try to impress to you what is the difference between a character and a personality. As you know, when you talk about character, it's a set of what you have in your mental qualities, your values. That is actually within you. It is hidden from other person's side. People don't even know that you have that traits. But personality is the one that actually show those traits in you. All right. So personality is the, the outer appearance and the behavior of a person based on the character traits that they have. The good traits or the bad traits in the character will be shown in their everyday behavior. So that's why personality definition is the behavior of a particular person which stem from their and from their perception, which stem from their qualities, values, and virtues and things of that nature. So that is the difference. Your character is from something that is within you. Your personality is the one that show you show it out outwardly. So as you know, this is where the difference is. You know, personality is the way one carries oneself, but character is what a person 
things inside them. And a personality, different things such as sense of humor, friendliness, passion, determine your personality. Uh, but the component of that is actually your element of respect, your element of responsibility, your element of honesty, courage, and loyalty. So these are the virtues that you have. And then subsequently, your personality is also connected with someone's other characteristic, right? appearance and characteristic that make them unique. So basically, your personality is yours and somehow your character encompasses your values. Right? And personality is very subjective, but character is very objective. So that is where we know what our character trait is and we know how it has been shown in our daily behavior in our appearances and the one that we show uh, the way we respond to things so that is the personality so here we talk about basically character is based on your principles based on what you actually are actually be what else personality is based on doing things that is the techniques that you apply to it based on the focus on appear to be what you actually be is that is your character. And it revolves around, if it is character, it revolves around all these good traits. Integrity, fidelity, compassion, contribution, responsible, justice, courage. So if it is uh, in personality, it uh, revolves around your imagination, your creativity, your relationship, your communication, and the way you bring and manage yourself in within you and with the community outside you. So these are the two important elements that we need to understand because maybe uh, quite a number of people who were thinking that it is synonymous, same. Uh, so there is actually a difference there. So here also we talk about a person who can be patient, a person who can be very curious, a person who can be brilliant, a person who can be generous, a person who is active, a person who is optimistic. So these are the good personality traits as compared to the negative, the opposite. So the opposite of patient, the opposite of curious, the opposite of brilliant. These are all there mentioned. So if we just take a note, which is the one that is or resembles us and how then we can either make it better or actually push it away because then we can redefine our character. And here we talk about, you know, uh, you can be compassionate, you know, you listen to other people, see things uh, in many views, uh, in many different perspectives. If you want to understand people, obviously you must learn to listen to people first. You must see people's point of views. You are also a very patient person who never give up. You are also a very humble person. You are also very joyful, always positive and help others to be the same. And you also an honest person of the, what, the choices you made and the action you did. And you are hopeful. You never, never lose your hope. You work hard to make a change. There's no way people say that there is no way out of the situation. For you, there is always a way out. You are very optimistic. You know, you are very considerate. So you are actually very considerate to people around you. Most important, you're also compassionate and considerate to yourself. And you're also very forgiving. And you are a person who are very well in charge, very well in self-control. You will never let others take over you not allow others to manage your emotion, not allow others to actually disturb, distract you and disturb you in terms of your feelings, your thinking and your actions. Now, uh, there's also another element uh, we need to know is personality and the human behavior. As I said, personality is actually being seen in your behavior. So personality is what you are, behavior is what you do, all right? In this case, this is where I want to actually emphasize you. You cannot change already what is already well ingrained in you. That is called personality. A personality is when somebody is already fixated with whatever they have. But does that mean they cannot change their behavior? As you know, attitude, 
can be changed within three weeks, the rule of three. If you practice within three weeks, then go into three months, doing the same ritual habits again, then that create your new attitude. So if you want to example, as I said, example, if you are really following the strict uh, standard operating procedure for COVID-19 pandemic, it will become your new behavior, which later become your new habit. And when the new habit is there, even though the old personality with an old character is there, you can redefine that behavior and then it become a new attitude. And once it become a new attitude, actually, you at the end of the day, the attitude determine where you can lead to, how you can actually go through and work out your position in any challenges. So basically, when we saw personality is something that is stable, something that is consistent in your thoughts pattern, in your behavior and emotion, and behavior is how you show it out in the context that you are in, right? So the behavior in this case, if we are talking about meeting up with the challenges. Now, if your personality has been in a way, a rather timid person, a rather a socialized person, a rather low self-esteem person. And that's how your behavior expressed. You are not confident of yourself. You tend to avoid, you tend to deny, you tend to run away from the situation. But you can always build up, bring in the new traits, change that coin, flip it around, flip to the new side where it is a better kind of a trait that you can use. Then with that behavior, it can make a different the way actually you handle your challenges. So talk about we talk about this element. You know, in all of us, we have what we call the capital, the assets. So we call it either capital or we call it either assets. And we talk about the natural capital that we have. And this is actually the the around the surrounding that we are having with us, our environment, our resources. You know that is with us that we. If we destroy these resources, there is no place for us even to live. The most important that is within us is also the human capital. Our skills, our knowledge, our good health, our physical capabilities, these are our human capital. Then it is with regard to subsequently how we bring ourselves in terms of the economic and financial capital. In this case, it is our credit, our cash ability, our saving, our economic assets, our capital base. And then the other thing is about our physical capital. This is where at the end of the day, we need the environment, we need the situation, and we need the technology. We are in this era where industrialization has gone into a new digital age. All these need to be there for us to learn how to use those capitals and assets that we have. Then we also need to have what we call the social capital, our social resources. This is important because most of us, unfortunately, my dear friend, most of us, they may have a network. They may have what we call the social uh, claims that they have. Relationship, the association that they have. But from generation to generation, now we are talking about from my generation, which is the baby boomers, from those who are now 80s, 70s above, they are the traditionalists. And then subsequently from there, we got the X generation, the Y generation, the Z generation, the Alpha generation. All this generation appears to be having somehow this element of capital in a way, maybe it seems to be enhanced, but quite a number of it may also be damaged and destroyed. Example, like you know, our so called natural capital can be a big issue now. Our so called human capital can also be an issue where a lot of people ending up despite achieving, but not to the fullest that they can. Similarly, with all these other capital. And if we to look at the element of what we call from this capital, we also talk about our livelihood assets. So basically, I think this is very important for each and every one of us. To face any challenges, our human assets must be to the best optimum availability for us to use and subsequently to be sustainable in our living. So we must develop our skill. 
we must develop our knowledge we must develop our abilities in anything we must be in good health in good spirit in fitness in all this biological psychological and spiritual domain we must have a very good family a very good family size we must have been educated we must have a very good uh, occupation eh? so these are actually the human asset that each and every one of us must try to actually develop and fulfill to the fullest ability that we can similarly with that possibly we can develop our financial assets we can increase our income we can know how to do more savings we can feel that we can move around very easily and very well because as you know the world today is the world that actually use what we call trading uh, where money is the key to this trading but then there is also other element your knowledge can be the key for the trading your skill can also be the key for the trading but the, the, the way they use it is in terms of the financial element and then we do have our social asset the social asset we talk about our relationship our affiliation our association so there is no such thing any one of us there is no such thing as individuation there is no such thing as living in a silo there is no element if you are not interdependent with other people you are going to face a lot of difficulties so similarly we have other so-called resources physical assets structures and whatnot the facilities and also the environmental assets and all of this is also for us to really care because always remember this if you want to survive in this world currently and way forward from now on is to be inside ourselves biologically psychologically spiritually fit so that we can attend and then look after our social environment to be as conducive as much for us to go on living our life so these are the good character what happens if you have a good character basically the outcome of actually redefine your character to a good one is then you can trust you can get the trust you can get the respect from other people you can allow you to influence others you become a good influencer what we are trying to do here is actually to develop all of us to be a better influencer to the others so that we can teach them we can show them the way we can be the role model right? changes your person perspective about failure this is another big issue a lot of people succumb to failure and immediately then defeat themselves then put themselves down so badly self-punish and then at the end of the day is where the condition of what we call desperation leading to self-harm leading to suicide and things of that nature sustain your true thought difficulties and opposition obviously if you have a good career you become more resilient you become more strong you can actually sustain yourself through any difficulties any opposition that you are facing and it can improve your feeling of good self self-esteem self-respect self-worth self-confidence because that good character make you feel good then it is a foundation for your happiness and for your healthy relationship always remember the most the rich in the world for any person is not about the rich of the money it is about the peace and the happiness that they have within them because even though they don't have big money they still feel good about being able to be at peace and in harmony within themselves and the surrounding that they have so at the end of the day with that good character it helps you to stay committed to your values and goal you never give up and it improves your chances to success in anything that you want to do in your work in other endeavors other undertakings and whatnot so that is how we need to look back is any of our character is the one actually hindrance ourselves to fight our battle with those so-called uh, challenges that we are facing so basically we are talking not only that's a good character we are talking about ethical we are talking about moral character so doing the right thing and the most important thing doing the right thing all the time not only at time but all the time so moral char uh, character talks about ethical behavior then talks about positive relationship 
talk about responsibility, accountability, talks about whatever that you are, you are contributing to the person, yourself, and to the group at large. And so moral character will honor the interests of others so that we do not violate any moral values as we perceive our own goal. Always remember, remember that you are not the only one you are not actually just pursuing for yourself. With your good character, it will transmit to the people around you and lead to be together. We are in synergy and we achieve a win-win situation for all. So performance, uh, character and moral character, these are the keys that we need to, the key traits or the key characteristics that we need to look at. If you are a person with a performance character, always you have a goal setting, you are committed for continuous improvement, you have a work ethic, you are very determined, you are very self-confident, initiative, creative, innovative, you know, and those kind of a thing because you are based on result-oriented. If you are moral, ethical character, so you are respectful, you are responsible to others, you show compassion, you are integrity, high integrity, justice, and moral courage, and also humility. So these are the important characters that each and every one of us must learn how to look at. Because quite a number of times, we did not at all actually simplify it in these categories. That's why we didn't even realize what do we have, how we need to improve, where is the point that we are lacking. So if we can put them in this proper perspective, in this kind of category, it would be better for us to actually look into it and improve ourselves very well. And this is where I would say the last my, my last slide is talking about what are the character of bad people or people who can get you yourself if you have it or it affects the people around you and things like that. So those who don't have empathy, those who doesn't have compassion, those who are very selfish, self-oriented, Things always evolve or revolve around self-interest. Those who don't care about anyone else, those who try to get pleasure from other people's pain, those who are easily bored and amuse themselves at the expense of others, those who are manipulative, cunning, those who may be charming and charismatic, but just for their own good, uh, those who are controlling, those who are dishonest, disloyal and cruel, and those who can end up rather delusional in terms of losing their own reality, and those who doesn't have any form of emotional attention, uh, attachment. So if you were to look at these elements, what I like to emphasize is look at it and see where you stand, how much of good character that you have, how much of some of the so-called bad character that possibly you need to address, and possibly you need to actually make a difference in yourself for the coming life that you have. So I think that is my last slide. Oh yeah, there's another last slide here. The seven rules of life, right? These seven rules of life is very important. So this is not only just character. At the end of the day, it does evolve around personality. It evolves around good, strong character. Make peace with your past. Don't try to bring your past. Don't carry those baggages. So it won't disturb how you present yourself now, how you then subsequently will get with your future. Because the past is for you to learn from it, but not to actually dwell into it and stop you from moving forward. And what other people think of you, it is not important. What you think of yourself is the one that you need to look first. It is good for other people to give a feedback, accept the feedback with good heart, with open heart. But then don't worry too much if people are thinking about you in a rather negative manner, destructive kind of uh, criticism, feedback and things like that. As long as you see it in a positive light what people think of you and you can make the changes if it is true and if it is not, you just ignore these people. The only person in charge of your happiness is yourself. This is a very important statement for yourself. Affirmation for yourself is that nobody can love you. Nobody can make you happy except you yourself who can do that. Don't compare your life to others because comparison is the thief of your joy. 
So don't try to compare your life with others because it will never be the same. You will be never equal. You will never be the other person. You are you and you have your own life. So never ever to try to compare yourself to those people around you. But you can learn from them. Have a competitive nature, positive competition. Learn from them, but never to try to compare to be as if you are them. So that is the issue. And always remember time always heals almost everything. So give time. Don't get so upset with things that is going on. It's as though like, you know, your wheel is not turning anymore. Always remember your wheel is always turning because you want to move forward. The wheel need to turn. So whatever is there, it will be a past that it will become a new thing where if you can learn, you can improve yourself. That time can heal things that you have gone through. Possibly it hurts your feeling and the intelligence. Stop thinking too much. And this key is that actually not only stop thinking, but stop overthinking. Sometimes when we say overthinking, we are thinking out of from nothing. So that is very important. So always, uh, you know, give this aura, smile, make people feel good, even though possibly you appear to be like making it up. But, you know, if you are really truly within you, a true happiness, a true peace, you can always smile genuinely, right? There's no point trying to make, uh, trying to please people by smiling, but yourself within are miserable. So this smile is a genuine smile. And if you can, it is an aura for other people to actually get it from you in your life. So remember this, wherever there's a human being, there's always an opportunity for a kindness. Either you can give to them or actually they can give to you. So that is my slide slide. So I'll stop the sharing until we go for our uh, discussion. Thank you, Felicia. Right. Thank you so much, Prof. Um, yeah, uh, really good session. Um, yeah, Azizato also mentioned this is a great session. Thank you so much, Prof. Um, so that's just a feedback as well. Um, so yeah, there's been a few people that tune in on Zoom and also on Facebook as well. So um, it's really interesting because this week we talk about character development. And you mentioned all the good character traits. You start off the, you know, you started the presentation off with that. And you mentioned all the good character traits, you know, from honest, lighthearted, uh, responsible, courageous, considerate, self-confident. And uh, yeah, I think one of the interesting part is that character and personality is you define it very well. The, the, the difference, um, character is something um, of a set of morals and mental qualities. And whereas personality is somewhat, it's an outer appearance, what people see and what you portray as well. Um, so um, can it possible be, uh, first question is that, is it possible that somebody can have not congruent character and personality? Uh, maybe not in a bad way, maybe in terms of like, uh, I would say job nature wise, you have to be outgoing, you have to appear uh, mm -hmm. sociable and things like that but character wise mm -hmm. uh, you're more you know tend to be a bit more reserved or uh, things like that so um, is there such a thing and uh, yeah then we move on to the next probably uh, deeper in the topic okay thank you so much it won't be easy to actually live a life of an actor trying to act but not the real sense of him. this mismatch this asynchrony can be there but you cannot sustain that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, then the issue is that uh, why uh, trying to even, you know, dishonest to yourself, all right? Uh, if you are dishonest to yourself, people doesn't really know who you are, uh, whether, you know, uh, people may continuously manipulate you. Uh, so, I mean, you can always uh, build up the new character. If you want to be within the circle of friends, and you want to be with everyone in that sense. Then you learn how to match yourself with these people. As I said, you know, sometimes it is okay to just make believe that you have to stay. But again, uh, it's very difficult to last because uh, you, at the end of the day, you how much can you really tolerate things that you don't like? Mm. So be truthful to yourself because good, strong character will never be afraid to show who they are. Right. Because if, if not, you'll be like, you know, this is where if you look into Stephen Covey's uh, 
you know, uh, effective behavior. Stephen Covey also talk about the principle centered, and the principle centered is that you can't live your life with other person principle. You have to live with your own principle. That's why the principle here doesn't talk about being selfish, but the principle here is knowing who you are, how you want things to be seen, then people will respect you accordingly to how you bring yourself around. So I would say there are people who possibly have a, a very misconcept about now, how should I behave in other in front of other people? Uh, maybe should I behave like a very nice person to just receive any kind of abuses, any kind of bully from my boss? I guess, uh, well, you can subject yourself to that. But, you know, whenever you go back home, you feel miserable. So there's no point feeling miserable if, if you know whatever that you are doing is not adaptive for you. So I think, I think that is the key here. Uh, yeah, people can do behave that way. People can, uh, in a way, keep themselves, dishonest toward themselves. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, it's very difficult to sustain uh, feeling good by doing those kind of things. Yeah, so I think it's um, really important to be honest to yourself first and foremost. And um, when you say about sustainability, that's very interesting because um, uh, true colors will show, uh, you know, uh, the more time that you spend, but it's very important, I guess, not to put a person on like a pedestal or high up, right? That um, uh, that you basically you get that you know blindsided by all the things that that, that mm. person may try to show in terms of you know to gain probably um, uh, acceptance or uh, mm. validation from others. So, so, but first and foremost, I think it's for ourselves to be truthful to ourselves to uh, be ourselves. Um, yeah, I like what you said about. Um, how to actually, you know, um, it's not about being um, like you can be strong, but like that's a, this quote, I'm just going to quote this, be strong, but not rude, uh, be kind, but not weak, be bold, but not bully, be humble, but not timid, be proud, but not arrogant. So, um, yeah, so it doesn't mean that to be strong, you need to be, you know, a bully, right? Um, so that is a totally different thing. Um, there's also one very interesting thing that you mentioned about personality versus human behavior. Uh, let's go a little bit deeper in that. Um, that you mentioned personality is what we are and behavior is what we do. Um, so why, what do you mean by personality? You cannot really change it and how, okay, maybe uh, i put an example, right? Um, maybe somebody who is not um, uh, is, is impatient one of a personality is it's a, a personality being okay I, I, I give you a very good simple example yeah all right yeah. Uh, I'm you a can change or you cannot change yeah I am a procrastinator mm. is that a personality uh, yeah that is my trait uh, the yeah. bad trait that I have which Your actually trait. been shown in my behavior in my daily life okay but then how could then I push aside that procrastination when the situation arises for me that I cannot use that element? Mm. For example, like now, uh, would I delay if I were to be in my clinic days, in my teaching days and things like that? Mm. Would I delay that? I mean, as simple as it, a person who is also a procrastinator may be actually a pilot. When he put on that pilot uniform, will he try to feel himself using the procrastination anymore. No. That would be very difficult because to start with, I also wanted to be a doctor, even though I'm a procrastinator. So I know I have to know where to put that situation of delaying things, putting it aside. So that is where you will never change it because I tell you frankly, if there is no demand for me to act, to behave accordingly, that procrastination come back. So let's say now, if, if I don't have any, I, I, you know, like this preparation for these notes and whatnot, if there's nothing, I would not do anything because then my procrastination will come back. I'm the real person who's doing that and never change. It. It's very difficult for me to change, but I need to have something to push me to change. Mm. So that's why, uh, example, like identification. This identification is the stethoscope on our shoulder. This identification is our white coat. This identification is we are within that network. 
and that makes us a different person at that particular time. You can, I can, all of us can, you know, have these so-called bad traits that actually is our real, that real self, which might not be shown to others, but for those who are close to us, they know this real self. Mm. So we can't, we can't cheat our wife, maybe. We can't cheat our sibling, maybe. And we can't cheat our parents. In fact, they know who we are, right? But we can we show a new behavior to a new group of people. But when they ask, uh, when they ask the parent, they say, oh, Lama, this guy, I tell you. Uh, so then they know, wow, that is a different from what we see. Uh, that is called make believe. That is called acting out. That is called we know our situation. We know how to behave. Mm. So that is where actually, unfortunately, all this is already ingrained with us. That is where the personality is already there. But since I want to be in different, different situations, I need to redefine my personality for that situation. Mm. This is where we, we say our behavior, redefine it, and then it become a habit. And once it become habit, it may become more consistent. Okay. I mean, like Felicia and uh, Wong, Coach Wong and Coach Felicia keep telling me about my eating, about my you know running, about my walking. But then again, as I said, if you are not there, then I will not be pushing myself too much because that kind of a thing is already in me. That, uh, that so-called automatic uh, programming, which is not easy to change. Okay, can I say that uh, when you say you set a certain thing, like for example, we, we set these sessions, right? And then you have your uh, responsibility that you need to work on and things like that. So does, it, does uh, setting habits and daily habits and routine help in setting the behavior change? And that it will affect your personality. I, I don't think, I mean, if, if, if we all can get our own way, uh, we will be late for all our appointments. We will not be a morning person. We just wake up whatever time we want. Uh, if we can get away with eating whatever we want without getting overweight, we may just not exercise, you know. So uh, creating the habits, um, meaning uh, that reflects on your behavior will ultimately help you to change your personality. Like they're, they're basically, the key must be actually the sense of purpose, mm. the goal intention. Okay. What, what do we really want to achieve from what we have mm. and the new we that we want to make? I guess if you don't have the element, then we don't have any real sense of purpose. As you say, you know, and ever get a chance, we will be, you know, doing the bad, uh, the whole happy again. Mm. So, these so called rituals, these so called a rigorous disciplining behavior will make that different. Uh, even though that, that's why people are talking about uh, this word of you know consistency, uh, istikoma, consistency, doing it again and again, repeatedly at the end of the day. And we know that behavior can change within three weeks. Unfortunately, what happened to SOPs? What happened to SOPs where people don't really change even though they were actually initially so in the line to change. Mm. The issue is that they don't have the sense of purpose. The issue is that they are forced to change. Imposition doesn't work. Right. Things must come from within. Mm. If you have from within you wanting it, that's why I say the key to all these changes is simple. I realize I've got a problem. I accept I've got a problem and I want to make a difference to overcome that problem. And I know I can't do it alone. I need to have this group. I need to have this jamaah. I need to have this support. And then I go into the support system mm. who can always remind me, who can always show me, who can always guide me. So until unless I have a purpose, do I want to be the same person over and over and over again expecting something new result? Obviously, that is called stupidity. Right. So obviously now when I know this element, I must put an effort to it. Mm. Then I have to put effort, and obviously that must be a consistency, a discipline action, and a reason for me to really achieve. Yeah, I think it starts with awareness before change. I think that's uh, what you meant. Like, um, then you put in the discipline and you put in the consistency. Yeah, because if you don't have a purpose, then you won't do something con consistently, and with you know. Um, so yeah, purpose comes first, awareness and uh, reflection. That's what we're doing, um, you know, with these sessions. Um, yeah, that's that's a very um, insightful 
Um, so it, it, I think it, it helps us to define a little bit more we, when we talk about character, personality, and behavior, um, and how it all develops and how we can what we can focus on to change. I mean, it all starts from ourselves, right? Um, but I, I uh, what caught my attention before the the last slide, you put in um, characteristics of like uh, evil uh, characteristics, right? So sometimes in 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 um, I mean in a lot of past sessions we have people that mention uh, they're in toxic in, in environments, you know, probably working maybe in the family, maybe their own spouse, you know, maybe not all the time, but you know when when we already know that character and personality is something that is already innate, right? So we've already nurtured, you already develop, you know, throughout the adolescence and things like that. So sometimes you have no choice but to face uh, those uh, character or personality. Um, in in two situations, okay, one, you are the toxic one, right? In number two, it's like you are in the in kind of environment. So how does one um, uh, be mindful about do they, uh, you can't just walk away, you know, especially if it's your uh, work or with your family, you cannot walk away from a toxic environment immediately, right? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, or if you know that you are sort of the problem, right? You, you are part of the problem. So how uh, would therapy help? Um, yeah, how, how does one go about it in two, okay. two different situations? Yeah. Two different situations. I think, I think let us answer, if we ourselves know how and what kind of, you know, evil nature that we have, I think uh, before we can actually try to work on something external, the, the person outside that caused the trouble, or, and you are stuck with that situation. So look into ourselves. I think this is where insight is important. This is where you know, uh, and, and the way to know it is actually, again, to have what we call the emotional intelligence of self-awareness, of self-reflection, of self-correction self-audit and wanting to make a difference because your life you you can't bring yourself this way in an environment whereby you thought that actually being a toxic everyone will toe in the line with you there might be someone who will you know subject to this nature of your manipulation and things of that nature but you can't survive because there will be people who go against you there will be at a time later as you can see history tell us again and again all these people never survive well look at any kind of uh, you know autocratic nature look at any kind of you know this element of ruling leadership and things like that they never last so they end up themselves in trouble because they are the one who are the causation of the problem so we need to learn that's why it's very important for us to learn from history to look at things around us to have to have an open eyes to see at things how things have gone to how things develop then actually we have to decide and very unfortunate if you don't come to any this realization you are still stuck in yourself that way despite your feeling actually hurting yourself you hurt people so unfortunately there are this group of people who are actually bad to others in a personality disorder wise we call it bad personality either they are narcissistic or either they are antisocial or sociopathic either they are in a way a group of borderline person and a group of histrionic person all these at the end of the day make other people around them miserable if they don't realize that they don't want to change unfortunately then they continue living that way but as you know their life will never be peaceful. Their life will never be happy because they will have to face the music. So that is about self. So if you come to that realization, you can make a difference. Now, if you are in the shoes where you become the victim, if you're in the shoes where you are at the receiving end, the thing is that first and foremost, how you want to look at it. Do you still want to look at it as a victim person? This is called a victim mentality. I, I mean, nobody can do anything if you want to be in a victim mentality. No? You are the one who create and make the choice to be a victim. When actually, you don't need, and you can improve yourself, develop your defenses, develop your coping ability, develop your knowledge, move around forward. If ever, 
I mean, nobody can say that, sorry, I'm stuck. I cannot run away from the situation. Sorry, I have to subject from his so-called, uh, you know, whims and fancies. Sorry, I cannot do this. Sorry, I cannot do that. Uh, so if that is the case, that is why I call it victim mentality. Mm. You, can, you can move up, you can move around. Because at times when toxicity has gone to a serious level, you better come out of that situation. Be brave to know that the world is so big for you to go around and do things. It's not just that one particular area. This is where I believe, I believe this kind of people is basically from the very young, people has already brainwashed them. You are nobody. You rely on somebody. That's become the dependent personality. You can't be yourself. That is become a person who is low self-confident. You have to be perfect. If you are not perfect, people cannot accept you. Then you become obsessive in nature. So at the end of the day, all these are the key to the problem that this person putting them up into this situation that they are always become the victim and being abused repeatedly mm. because they don't know how to bring themselves along. So please, possible, learn to develop assertiveness. Don't be a passive pessimist. So, but these are the things, as I said, if it is already within you, it is not easy to change, but you need a lot of assistance. You need a lot of guide. You need friends around you. You need your network to support you. Mm. Then you may have a new life. I think I can tell you a, 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 a twin sibling, a twin. If the home environment has been so toxic, and if that particular twin, then there is an experiment with regard to this. One twin who stays with that toxic environment, but another twin was managed to being actually given to another another family to actually look after them, with a very good nurture by the new family. That second twin never developed into any kind of a problem. Despite they were from the same genes, from the same parent genes, from the same nature kind of a thing. And earlier nurturing wasn't good for both. But the second twin who was taken out, that means nurture is much, much more important than nature. Mm. What you have within you may not even come out oh, can have. So that's why there will still be a lot of time for people to be nurtured very well. Even though you have become an adult, you need sometimes a new environment. You can't stay in the same environment that actually push you down, make you miserable more and more. Right. So it's a choice, right? Uh, I think like what you recently went on the uh, went on the talk yeah, the about, yeah, for the uh, you know, for the to know the rights for an abuse, um, uh, abusive uh, sometimes household and how uh, women can you know, um, so yeah, you had a good session on that. Um, so yeah, at the end of the day, we are choice. Do we choose to be victimized? Uh, yeah, being being in a wrongful situation doesn't mean that you deserve it, right? So you you must know where uh, you are. You have your rights and knowing your self worth to pick up and um, you know move on and yeah and um, I always say it's not just about whether it's that day of nature you know you nurture you you have the choice to you know grow to be better as well and uh, hence um, it's almost like you know the story of success where they say it's not it's not your fault if you are born poor but if you die poor you know you made that choice. Sometimes in life, so um, yeah. So uh, what well, I think uh, you finish off with a very nice uh, seven rules of life. Uh, I want to just focus on uh, two things. The first one is uh, do not compare your life to others. Comparison is, is a thief of joy. Uh, how does one not compare? Because it's so easy. Even like I think from young we are being nurtured in a way where. Our parents will say, look at the neighbor's kid, you know, or your cousin doing so well in school. Like, you should study more. Like, how uh, how do we do something different uh, from now on? Like, um, how do we know when we are comparing and how do we stop that vicious cycle? Okay. Uh, as, as you said, one of the key about this comparing is because we are still in the environment that compares things. Uh, so, if we are already able person, not 
dependent anymore mm -hmm. and we know how to be independent ourselves, surviving on our own, be self-sufficient for ourselves, that means you break away from that situation. Despite you have been brainwashed, despite you having, having this kind of idea that you are not that worthy person compared to others, but if you break away, maybe that input will not be there anymore. Mm. And if you break away, unfortunately, but you get back to the same birds of a feather situation, mm. then fortunately. I can tell you uh, my, 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 my experience with abuse ladies that I've noted when I was, you know, uh, doing some of my work in Bangi and, you know, uh, sometime after they get away from the first marriage, from the first abuse husband, somehow they will somehow manage to choose the second husband it's the who same also pattern. have the same tendency. Mm. And when we ask them the question, why? Yeah. They say, I, I don't deserve to get a better one. The question is so fun. The, the answer is so, you know, you, you just can't accept the idea why you want to punish yourself. No, it's not logical, right? Yeah. It, it's not only not logical, it seems to be like, you now where are you now? Where, what reality are you in? Because if someone says, you know, I, I, I don't deserve to be better, so where does that come from? Mm. It must be this person appears to be like, can't, can't find any way out. I, like, like, no, one of them I was asking, why can't you find a person? They said, no, I, I only know how to find person in that known place. Example, like in this case, a, a lady who was a contractor. Mm -hmm. And he said, my circle of friends is always in this uh, so-called karaoke club mm -hmm. uh, among the current contractor. So I married another contractor who at the end of the day, with all their problem they have, also abused me. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, it is not that you can not do that kind of a career work, uh, ways of life. You can. The only thing is that you must know your circle of friends. Mm. You must know, you must be able to assess it. You yeah. must be able to then, I mean, this is what we call past experience is very important. Mm. If you don't learn from past experience, what can we do? You will repeat the same thing again. You will repeat the same thing over and over again. I've got another case similarly. I've got another case interestingly. You know, these so-called graduates, uh, you know, they were couple and until they, at the end of the day, they all you know, work and then they get married. And unfortunately, even at the point when they get married, the, the lady's parent already pushed her away because she doesn't really follow advice. And to, to top it up, actually, the so-called husband who was with her before, he was already abusive at that point of time. Mm -hmm. While even as a couple, he already shows all these those features already. Yeah, so the... when I ask the question, how come you cannot get out of that situation when the telltale sign is already there? The when, when, yeah. So the issue is as simple as it. Now the, the 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 answer is really very interesting. Who wants me if the others in the university have noted that I always go with this guy? Mm. I cannot get a new new friend. A they say that I'm. I, the I, they say that I'm already being used by this guy. Mm. But this is the way that person thinks. Are you sure? Yeah. So their mentality is very interesting. So as I said, intellectually achieved person, it's not. It's not still the way to go forward until not only just academically achieved, scholastically achieved, intellectually able. You must also be emotionally able. Emotionally intelligent. Mm. Because if you don't have your emotional intelligence, you're in deep trouble. Mm. So, it, it, so we, we, we notice that this, this thing is going on to some people, and this is why we are worried because some of them have been brainwashed to be a dependent personality person, to yeah. be a person who is low self esteem, not feeling good, low self worthiness, doesn't feel about inner self. Mm. Uh, you know, as, as I mentioned just now, how good a character is can be if you know who you are. Uh, you will take yourself very and you cherish yourself very well, things like that. So somehow people may be brainwashed, but we can undo that brainwash. We can. That's why we have a, a method of conscious mind activity, subconscious mind management therapy. There are. We can change all those things.
Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So we hope to reach out to those. Uh, yeah, if anybody's listening or you know anybody who, um, I think it's really important personally. Uh, like I can speak for women. You know, women do need their yeah, support system. Um, as well as men do as well. I mean, um, not just women, but men also get into abusive uh, relationship as well. So it's not just sometimes physical, but it's emotional abuse, right? Um, and uh, and that's very traumatic because sometimes it comes already from uh, perhaps a broken uh, or dysfunctional uh, family, maybe a divorced uh, single parent um, a household and things like that. So um, it is so important to have really good people around you um, to always uh, keep you on track um, and uh, when you are feeling uh, down it's okay but if you have that one good friend to uh, be able to uh, you know not judge you uh, but be able to tell you and but of course at the end of the day we must work to uh, work on ourselves you know like that's why I think um, the second one that um, before we end this session is about time heals almost everything um, I think um, that as when time can heal things, but like what you said, you know, people go on through and through all this abuse um, and uh, not seeing the self-worth and attracting the same tendency. So um, it's not just time, but time will give you the cushion, uh, but you we need to work on it. Right, we need to uh, get the support system. We need to work through things. If we need to seek professional help. Uh, we go back to spiritual. We have all this uh, uh, support from you know uh, good family and friends. I mean, not everybody. You won't don't go and tell everybody, right? So you have you can pick a few trusted ones, and if you don't have any trusted ones that you can really uh, tell, you, perhaps you can reach out to a professional. Um, so I think yeah. So what what do what do you think? How would you tell people like? You know, sometimes when we go through difficult times, whether it's mourning or for a, a lost family member, you know, mm-hmm. or a failed relationship, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, time, sometimes I feel that time doesn't heal. Um, it, not just the time factor, because some mm-hmm. people, they get more bitter, more uh, not so trustworthy anymore. Like, mm-hmm. like they, they, they become very cynical. They become very negative, right? Um, so how, what, okay. uh, what do we do with the time? I think that's most important, right? I think, I think number one is not about the time itself. It is about your way of letting go things. When you don't let go, time doesn't even help you anymore. Mm. So the issue of letting go is when can you let go? If you want to continue believing about your losses, about whatever that you suffer, mm. then it ends up become pathological. Then it becomes nothing good to you anymore. It becomes a disordered situation. So basically, there are a few things that a lot of people, I mean, as I said, it's not easy to forgive or maybe it is easy to forgive. It is not easy to forget. Things are always there for you to remember. But the way you look at it is the one that determines how you see it again and again and again. Let's say if you're stuck with this anger and frustration that you have, and you never know how to let it go. And this is what we call that 70,000 thoughts are all old thoughts that keep coming back and any similar similar or trigger, you will repeat and go back to the old records that you have. It is like playing this old record again and again and again, year in, year out. So how can you get out of the situation? Mm. So that is why the other keyword is not only letting go, break away, then move forward, find a new environment, find a new group of people, right? Then push things aside. Because as I said, you know, if you, you if you don't see it, you can easily forget it. Yeah. But if you see it, something nature similar to that, then it comes back. I mean, all wound always hurts you. Yeah. You know, there will be that. But then be strong. Mm. Uh, learn how to do it. So, uh, it is not about that time, basically. The time can make it so fast if you know how to let it go. Mm. Right. I think uh, I think that's really good. So, yeah, so we have the seven tips, right? Um, yeah, just to uh, recap for the benefit of our audience. Um, some are nodding and saying that this is a really good topic. Yeah, so the seven rules of life that Prof has just mentioned just now is like, Number one is to make peace with your past. Like, you know, you say, oh, wounds, always, it's always there. You know, you always, if you think about it, 
we have 70 thousand thoughts and a lot of it are old thoughts and we may feel we may still remember you know but it's important to make peace and um, don't beat yourself away because that is not your future that was your past but you learn from it so that you don't repeat it right um, the more I think you put it under the carpet or you don't you sweep it under the carpet and you don't work on it you don't move on with it then you always uh, come back to it and you always attract the same pattern um, number two is what other people think of you yeah it's really none of our business because uh, you cannot control other people's thoughts but you can control yourself right you can make choices make conscious choices and uh I like this one. Um, the only person in charge of your happiness is you. So happiness is within. Nobody can make you happy. Nobody can make you sad, right? Yeah, they make, they can do things that make you happy, but at the end of the day, you choose, right? So it's really important not to get uh, validation from dependent, over-dependent on others, outside, outsource it, right? So it's very much within. Uh, do not compare your life to others because comparison, we, we, we are, uh, Prof did a very good uh, a very good uh, example of it. Comparison is, um, you know, the teeth of joy. So how we end up, you know, comparing uh, with other people and um, it's really important, um, you know, I think we went on the topic because Prof has recently uh, spoke on the topic of abuse, uh, women, especially in uh, abusive household and uh, what are the rights. So uh, why some, uh, uh, a lot of actually uh, women has, uh, a lot of people that has uh, that has involved was involved in an abusive relationship will tend to um, have the tendency to attract the same correct uh, personality or characteristics over again um, because they don't think uh, they deserve better. So you know again, it's really number three and number four. Um, really, uh, the person in charge of your happiness is you. And uh, time we talk about time. We spoke about time. Um, time does not heal everything, uh, but of course time and knowing that you can move forward, learn from it and move forward, um, that will heal it. So definitely, that is what we, when we say, give it time, right? And stop thinking so much. It's all right not to know all the answers. Only God Almighty know, knows the answers. So we, we, uh, we leave some, uh, you know, we leave it, we hope for the best, we pray and we leave the rest to, the, to God, right? And, uh, and smile. So you don't own all the problems in the world. Uh, I mean, we can have only so much problems that we can handle, uh, but, you know, we do believe that God only gives us problems or challenges uh, that we can actually overcome. Uh, so the whole, the, the problem is that we try to hold everything, you know, we try to burden ourselves with a whole lot of, other, maybe not just our problem, maybe other people's problems so we want to carry. So don't carry other people's cross, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, Shaki, they... got, Shaki got something to say, Shaki. Yeah, Dr. Shaki. Yes, yes. I have a few questions, but actually I don't lengthen the today's presentation. So already we... It's okay, it's okay. All right, no problem. Yeah, you can also type it in the next time. If let's say you... Okay, so that... my first question is, hmm. actually, is there any defined component that we can, uh, we can uh, assess the character of a person? Number one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is it um, uh, usually the character of the person varies in different uh, contexts like the cultural and religious context, okay? Uh, and in our society, actually in Asian society, the people have actually have some misconception about the definition of character. Uh, some people in our society, actually they define particular issue to raise the character of a person. So actually how can we change that uh, concept in our society? <laughs> Okay, first and foremost, uh, most uh, important is that, uh, can you really, like for me, if I'm a foreigner to that culture, I'm a foreigner to that society, am I being accepted if my point of view to, to show the perspective that possible could explain things is well accepted or not? So I think, I think that is the key. Uh, a lot of time, uh, people are very rigid and close-minded not to be able to be, uh, how should I say, listen to other perspectives. That's why we noted that, you know, even in the world, there are so many clans and so many sex and, uh, and, and custom situation kind of thing, uh, whereby people are continuing to do the same thing and we can't do anything much because they are in their culture, we are not in their culture. The acceptance is very important. So obviously, these are the key differences. We learn how to respect, 
we learn not to impose, but we learn, if possible, to develop that kind of relationship in, as a doctor, especially as a doctor, to develop that kind of relationship that they are willing to listen to how we see things around. So until unless we develop that kind of a good rapport building relationship that at the end of the day, then we become part of what they say, a new learning process for them. So if not, it will be not easy for anyone to change anything. I mean, like even the United Nations cannot change any country. <laughs> they can say, they can make noise. Everybody says, oh, we agree that this is not right. The country doesn't change at all. It is because they have their own way of doing things. They have their own way of looking at it. They don't even trust that group people of people saying what is right, what is wrong. So actually, this is the issue. So, but basically, I think uh, true enough, uh, our duty is how to be friend with everyone. It's how to develop that kind of connection where people want to listen to us. People want to hear our point of view, our perspective. And if we can achieve that, that is possibly the first step that you can see the difference. So, for example, like, uh, you know, if we got people that is not from our culture, our society, who comes in with their problem. I mean, I cannot, I cannot say about Islam to the non-Muslim, maybe. It's very difficult for them to accept that fact. I cannot say about how Malay do things to the Indian community, maybe. It is completely a very different way of looking at things. But then, I can just see first their approval if they want to listen to other people's perspective. This is the only thing that I can do. So, uh, again, if not, we become in position. If you try to impose things on someone who doesn't want, I mean, you impose on some of this group who doesn't believe in SOPs. That's why it doesn't work. And you punish them. It even doesn't work. Because we are all afraid because of punishment only. It's not truly our own genuine motivation to make that difference. So this is the issue. Uh, life cannot be with carrot and stick. Life cannot be with reward and punishment. Mm. Life must be true self, wanting to be a true person who knows how to bring yourself up and success in that nature. So nothing else can be done. That way. So I know that is a lot of differences. Uh, it is. It won't be easy, but we are doctors that can, in that sense. I think even lay person also can learn how to develop a very good relationship. Possibly that could us. I hope uh, that answered the question, Shakir. So next, uh, my questions was that: uh, Is there any specific component of character that you can define? Like we can uh, assess the personality of a person. Yeah, some Start a personality character. assessment, right? Mm. So we okay. can ask, can you assess character of a person like that? Any tools is there? Yeah, yeah. Basically, uh, if you were to look at personality uh, assessment, okay. there are many uh, psychometric assessment, personality okay. profiling that you can use. In fact, uh, for the moment, uh, any of the student, I would ask them to do. 16 personality profile, Mayer Briggs, or mm -hmm. ISANG, or, you know, uh, just, just to get to know who you are. And then you, you can explore many more, the, the, the nature, the, the, they call it the, the animal's way of, uh, you know, like, you know, the, am I an owl? Am I, a, uh, you know, um, uh, that, 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 that is for, for you yeah. know, uh, the so-called many. And people are talking about, you know, your your months of birth and things like that yes you can just look into it but see whether does that really match you mm. is it even like uh i i i encourage if someone believe that they have this nature for the light personality narcissistic personality hysteronic personality there are many many of these tools that you can see whether you fit in the criteria or not mm. so it is always that it is already available. I mean, and usually proven through time, right? <laughs> no, uh, sometimes, sometimes uh, you do you do agree that because I mean, like for me, if I were to look at it, I've already gone through 60 years of la my life. Obviously, there are many things that we seem to be okay. Yeah, it mm -hmm. has been consistent. It has been okay. true. 
uh, even at a very young age, said, I tell you frankly, I did my MMPI, the Minnesota Multifacet Personality Inventory, in my year one medical school in 1979. Wow. When I joined that medical school, UM, I did MMPI on myself. And I realized I have a hypochondriacal tendency. Mm. That means I'm very worried about being sick. Wow. So when I did that, my hypochondriacal tendency was there. Mm. What does it mean if I don't realize that? That means I may behave hypochondriacally, a hypochondriasis kind of a thing, if I let it be. What will happen is that even for a slightest sickness or slightest fever, I will run through to the clinic and waste my time waiting in the clinic and then absent myself from class. Mm. By knowing that, that you are mindful about your your traits and you are... You, yes. Yeah, okay. Then I, I fight against it. I, I Now I know that is not right. Mm. Why should I go on not knowing and then believing that it is like that? Does, does those tests still re it's relevant? I mean, just to add on to Dr. Shakir's... Um, uh, question right um does those uh tests still is still relevant today or is there oh, any updated ones the the, the, the best test is uh, the the new version edition of mmpi which mm. is much shorter okay it's only about 300 questions but it covers a lot about 10 actually uh tendencies that you can end up either you end up become hypochondriasis you end up becoming you know all these clinical psychiatric condition nice. and then that, uh, that could be as i said uh, a quite a serious thing that they look at Mm. tendency to be neurotic tendency to be depressive tendency to be psychotic and things like that is very comprehensive test but there are other short short tests that you can just for the sake of understanding who you are mm. many tests is available uh, which i say at the end of the day if the test or have a, what we call the analysis of it then try to understand but i did i did my 16 pf and it, I, I realized that I only have two tendencies. I have actually uh, two tendencies. I more towards a guardian person and more toward a counsel person. That means I can do counseling, I do counsel kind of a thing. So basically, I am like a father figure. So can I be a head of department if I'm a father figure? It would be very difficult mm. because it's very That's difficult for much. me to... Yeah, it's very difficult for me to be firm. Yeah. So if I don't do that, I wouldn't know why my place to be as a leader is actually very wrong. Because I tak sampai hati kind of a thing. <laughs> you know? right. So that's why it is very important to know who you are so that you can match with your career, let's say. Mm. And to know who you are so that you can match with your learning. Example, like the owl and the, you know, example, that, that four, you know, uh, animal. Uh, I've done it before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was only remember yeah, yeah. owl. You know? yeah. Ada uh, owl lah dengan satu yang yang cantik tu, apa? Uh, burung yang kembang eko tu, uh, the peacock, <laughs> you know, <laughs> things like that. So actually, just to understand yourself, you can do all those tests and find out, and then later you can talk to us, and then we can help you to digest it. Uh, so I think quite a number of students who did those kind of a test come and see me and say, well, is it true? I can I have this here, and how can I handle it? Uh, so I think it's very important. Yeah, right. so Prof, um, yeah, just to uh, wrap this session up, uh, next week we're going to talk about celebrate uh, triumph, right? Um, what uh, can you give us a gist of what you'll be sharing about? Yeah, basically, basically I, I got that through topic. I, I forgot the second topic, actually, it's only last week. Yeah, yeah. no worries. I've been okay. uh, celebrate the triumph, right? Yeah, so we yeah, so celebrate the triumph means it's it, the, the addition of all the three mm. that make you feel now you can be. A successful person. Okay. Now you know that you have already, you know, able to prepare yourself, expect the unexpected. What is the second, the last one I've got? Of, and I cannot think about it. Yeah. And then today, when you put them together, part of engagement. And then yeah, today, yeah, know, know how to engage with people, yeah. know how to talk to people, you know, things like that, know how to bring yourself around. Then later today, you will know, become a new character redefined. So obviously, you should be successful. You should be happy. <laughs> you should be celebrating. Mm. Uh, but again, as I said, lah, I mean, most of us, much of, uh, even saya pun, a lot of time people keep telling me something. I just keep pushing it aside. I keep, you know, by the time it end up the third day of the weekend, I forgot already what's going on. Mm. 
Mm. <laughs> because again, like, you know, Coach Wong was always saying, well, Muhammad, you are not really a good person who follow my advice. <laughs> you know, you always push aside and don't follow. It's very true because we tend to go back to our automated negative program. Mm. That is the truth. All right. So, yeah, I think today's uh, session is quite fruitful. I think, um, yeah, Dr. Shakir has some good uh, questions. But don't worry, anytime you, anybody has a question, uh, please do answer in the chat box. Raise your hand uh, because I cannot see your signal whether you want to ask a question, right? So, you can always uh, uh, press on the emotion emoji button, raise your hand so I can know that you're, you want to ask a question, reaction. Or you want to put, yeah, so Coach Wang has raised his hand. Yeah, so at least now I know that he's, he wants to say something, right? Yeah. And then you can also uh, type in the chat box. Um, oh, yeah, so so hence why we are definitely open for uh, questions because uh, sometimes, uh, yeah, sometimes we can get, uh, don't worry about like, you know, butting in, you know, so you just raise your hand, that's fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for joining the session. I think um, it is through discussion that we are able to, uh, peel off the layers of the presentation and then uh, make it personalized to our own. Um, hence, asking questions is always good. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Prof. Muhammad, uh, Coach Wong, Dr. Shakir, we have uh, Pan Wan, we have Azizato, um, and also we have a few people on um, uh, Facebook as well as watching. Um, and this session is recorded. Please do share it with your you know, family, friends, colleagues, whoever that you think uh, may be uh, talk, uh, maybe interested in character development. I think uh, this is a really, really good topic uh, because this week, this month we are focused on um, uh, self-reflection uh, on how do we battle challenges and uh, how do we uh, come out at the end of it and to celebrate the triumph, right? So yeah, so thank you everybody. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.